neither team with a Graviton Surge. Ah, uh, this is gonna be fun. There you go. Hey, there you go. Perfect play from Mono. Looks to put a map on the board. Highly just trying to buy a little bit more time. It doesn't really matter. As soon as the transcendence expires, it might just be it. Bubble Grab is already good, though. Down the grab the the grab is good, though. Gonna be taken out. The Hakuman is going to be done. going down. The beat comes in. Dynasty, can they actually do it? No way. Dummy, he gets the right click against all odds. They look to turn this one around. The Shatter comes through. Zephyr trying to beam them down. He'll get knocked up into the air. The OT plummets away. And oh, my God, Dynasty. Pull up a seat and maybe stay a while because you're watching Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into your favorite games now. Clearly, I'm not AJ Fry, who is usually here, but he has had an E3 this week, but thankfully we do have Renanthra on the couch, who is a specialist, and I definitely need that help. <laughs> yes, I mean, here, here's the thing. We played Overwatch together. Yes. Right? We did some workshop modes and I stuff. I feel bad for you. And uh, I do, too. <laughs> but it's okay, because, you know, I'm here to, like, hold your hand through this whole experience, right? Like, if mm -hmm. there's any characters you don't understand or any maps you don't know, that's what I'm here for. That's almost everything. So why don't we jump into week one of stage three and check out some highlights. Calls, some clutches, and some throws, and boy, is it good to have the OW back, is it not, Ron? Yeah, we're halfway through the entire season, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, stage three is a big time for everybody because obviously, if you if you shut down now, you're not making it to those final season playoffs, obviously. Mm -hmm. So here's 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 the big thing, right? Uh, we haven't changed meta in a while. Stage yeah. one and two were a lot of goats. Mm -hmm. And you watch this weekend with me, we saw a lot of goats still. Mm -hmm. Tiny little bit of variances, but largely still a bunch of tanks. Yeah. Imagine, you know, we play tanks throughout the rest of this stage, and then we go to stage four and they actually shift the meta. 
That'd be pretty chaotic. Okay. Let's, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I, I want to talk about the actual teams right now, what we've been seeing. Is that maybe the reason that we've seen some of these bottom teams keeping up yes. with some of the top teams, yes. do you think? I, the reason I said that before is because I think a, a couple of teams that we're watching in stage three starting okay. to get like a little bit um, more practice on the kind of their guys that were good in the mm. DPS meta. And, you know, just in case of like a curveball here, because it, it, it has happened mm -hmm. in um, the first season. Well, let's let's talk uh, some of the first notes we have here is NYXL and Houston. Houston. He talked to me about uh, that match. It was a, yes. uh, really close as well, was it not? Yes, it ended in a, you know, with the distance, full five mm -hmm. maps, which is not what you'd expect from a New York game against mm -hmm. Houston. You know, Houston, though, have a reputation for choking, right? <laughs> uh, I think a lot of their fans are very frustrated because they're like, oh, we, you know, we love you. We, we see you go so far against all these good teams. And then you get to the fifth map, and it's just a nosedive in quality of play. What, what so, is it? Like, what's happening? I don't know. I'm not is in it, the Is it room, nerves? Do they realize? That, like, the, I'd be excited. Is it a case of them thinking it's going to happen, so it happens? I, maybe. Like, Self-fulfilling so, prophecy? Let's say you're the, you're the underdog, right? Yeah. You go against these, these giants, the top three, the big three in Overwatch League. Yeah. You know, you, you should be proud and amped to get this far. And then I guess some of them might just crack into the pressure. Exhaustion, or, too. I mean, like. Yeah, I mean, it's a long series, right? Um, but this, this was a good series for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, New York, they actually had their captain come back into the lineup. Um, his name is Say mm -hmm. He was the self-proclaimed best tracer in the world in season one, and he hasn't played because you know all, all these tanks around. He doesn't yeah, play yeah. tanks. But sliding in, they replaced Mecco, their typical diva player, uh, put him on Sombra, and we had this kind of discussion about Sombra goats and then yeah, it yeah. rising in popularity. Um, and New York wasn't a team that actually liked the Sombra variant until this week, and the Houston game looked rocky in the Sombra, and you know Say yeah, is yeah, yeah. kind of rusty. But uh, he did seem like he was learning that character live on air and becoming progressively better as the maps went on. So, so now, now that you just brought it up, before we dive in, into more teams, let's talk on that meta right now. It's because sure. it has been um, just the, the ghost for so long. Yes. Um, and I feel like just as a spectator, it, it kind of slows things down. I feel like people have to be frustrated. For better and worse, I, right? I've loved seeing Sombra jump into this now. Seeing the Sombra ghost is like, oh, there's actually like DPS going on here. Yeah, is, a little bit. Are, are we gonna see more teams start to really adapt this or are they just kind of getting ready to full throw DPS in here? Okay, so um, that depends on the team you're asking, right? We've seen a couple of teams really adopt this Sombra play style. Mm -hmm. We've seen others say, you know, like we don't wanna cheese it, we just wanna play the classic traditional variant. Um, <laughs> and, and it's up to your, your philosophy, I guess. Mm -hmm. We've seen teams even make swaps to make this happen where they weren't happy with a certain play style or needed a breath, uh, breath of fresh mm -hmm. air. Uh, Notes uh, from Boston Uprising going to Dallas with his very staple D.Va play mm -hmm. um, allowed them to play that style. Whereas Dallas Fuel gave them RCK who is a great D.Va but also a great Sombra. And um, weirdly enough we haven't seen that. Yeah, right? But we haven't seen, uh, oddly enough, RCK been put on the Sombra, even though that's kind of what we assumed the trade would be for. Mm. Uh, we can talk a bit more when it gets there. Yeah. But um, to answer your question, yeah, I guess it depends on what the, the coaches want, uh, the, the player's comfortability, and I guess, um, you know, how comf or confident they are playing a, tra a traditional style against the big three that yeah, we know yeah, are so yeah. good. What, what about, what about um, Bunker then? Yeah, uh, like we're see we're also seeing bunker. Like that, the goats isn't like the only full thing we're seeing. We've seen no. some bunker being thrown in there too. Is that kind of just a variant of this, or like why? How is this taking place in the meta right sure. now with bunker? Okay, so bunker is not a variant of goats. Um, obviously, the mainstays of that composition are Orisa, mm -hmm. uh, either Torbjorn or Bastion. Bastion yeah. most prominently. Just set up a turret and sander. Yeah, and then you have Baptiste there to throw the little invulnerability lamp to keep you safe in in the case of a dive. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I absolutely hate this this play style. It's so boring. It's resident sleeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're sitting there and you want to see like these cool rotations or like you know these cool set plays. But when your set play is, we're gonna sit here. On it is not top fun. Top of the pain. Yeah, just it's just wait. Yeah. So boring. It's I, so boring. Is it? I feel like it's still a little more interesting though because at least there's damage being done. Sure, right. yeah, but like... <laughs> like, I, in, like if someone likes to shoot things, <laughs> at least I okay. get to see that. I, I see your argument, and here I'm gonna, here's why I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> okay. It's because your damage dealer is holding down left mouse and looking That's straight. That's so skillful. It's not skillful. Bastion Maybe is the hardest bracket. character to play. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah? No, Do you I'm kidding. Elaborate on so that? <laughs> I, I have no more <laughs> argument for this. <laughs> if they dive me, I have to hold right click now and heal myself for a little bit. That's hard, man. And if they're, if they're not on me, I have to hold left click. It's a really hard it's decision. A hard, it's a hard knock life. Well, so I mean, so <laughs> let's leave them be. We'll stop harping on them for a bit. Okay. I, I do want to talk about um, some uh, new rosters here. Yeah. Um, so uh, Toronto, first off, we'll start with 
with uh, Gods and Shariq. Yeah. Um, just how, how are some of these new guys performing right now? So in the first match, they did unfortunately lose to Paris. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the scoreline was 3-1, but it was closer than that scoreline indicates. Yeah, yeah. And Gods and Shariq, you know, the new guys coming from Montreal Rebellion, yeah. played pretty well, actually. They, they definitely weren't the reason they lost. Um, but it is evident that they were yeah. still miscommunication going from full Korean to mixed. Well, that's what I was going to say. This is the, these are the first non-Koreans on the team. Is, yes. is this a communication uh, issue then? I th do you think is throwing yeah. into the mix? Yeah, no, I definitely think that's a big element there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've seen in their behind the scenes videos that their head coach Bishop has talked about um, them trying to streamline communication to make it efficient, mm -hmm. um, hopefully in a way that actually is even better than if they're just communicating in full Korean all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, you don't want to rely on just like straight up comms. Yeah, so you want to have something that's that's cleaner, something yeah, that's simpler like to code work. Or, or something yeah, like that, yeah, like yeah. military. Shrieks just. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that, what does that, 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 that mean? Well, okay, here's, here's actually, I've heard the, <laughs> Korean teams, I heard the Korean teams do this where when they're targeting uh, someone, yeah. they don't have time to say the full name, especially because a lot of them are English names. Yeah. So they're hard to roll off the tongue for them. So they'll only say the first syllable. Okay. So for Reinhardt, you hear Rein, 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 Rein. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. That and then makes sense. The, the best one is when there's a Lucio. You go Lu, 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 <laughs> and it's just it's just a madness. It's on, just like, this a, beautiful orchestra. Yeah, it's like six people going Lu, 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 at like different pitches. It's That's like so good. Okay, so some other players, uh, of course, on the Valiant, uh, we have Fact Fiction, yeah. uh, McGravy, and Shax. Yeah. Uh, how are they looking? Is it the same kind of situation, just warming up? Um, so you know, this is a big trade between Valiant and mm -hmm. Florida. Florida getting Fate out of the deal as their main tech instead, and I. I think, you know, um, that Valiant actually got the much better end of the deal here, right? They yeah. got to get Fate, who was rumored to be kind of problematic in the locker room with, mm -hmm. with in the mixed culture, get him out of there, get some awesome Western players from Mayhem Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and although we only saw Fact Fiction play over the weekend, Shax and, and McRavey not getting the playtime yet, Fact looked spectacular. You can yeah. see a lot more um, unity in, in his direction, which is, uh, you know, great because we haven't seen that from Valiant since the first season. Now, you mentioned something just, I'm curious from a coaching perspective, when you have a player that, you know, is harder to synergize when it comes just um, to working with a team, just personality-wise, sure. is, it, is it easier to fix that if they're a good player than to have someone that just works well emotionally with the team but isn't as skilled? So, I mean, I'll, I'll throw a question back at you. Okay. Would, would you rather have a player that was top top echelon, amazing, like, mechanically, but kind of difficult to, well, you know, we'll, we'll be frank, he's kind of all kind of. Okay. Or would you rather have a guy that's an excellent team player, always giving his best and, you know, first in to the, to the gym and last out? But giving your best doesn't not, get not, wins. What if what if that's the person's skill cap? Arguably, well, okay, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of rules in this game that aren't super mechanically intensive that still fair, have fair. a high impact. Like if you're on main support or something, yeah, you can see the difference if they're better, like mm -hmm. mechanically. But a large contribution for you will be things like timing and like corralling yeah. the team yeah, yeah, yeah. and making plays, positioning all that. And that's yeah. much better if you're just a better mm -hmm. team player. Right? So I guess your question is answering my question with <laughs> you'd rather have someone that you can work on their mechanics. It's a, there's a balance, right? <laughs> okay. You don't want uh, a bunch of great guys that are awesome at teamwork, yeah. but their overall level is just so low, mm -hmm. right? We've seen a, um, a couple of teams kind of go in this direction where they all love each other and they're all really good, but they just can't break out on a, mm -hmm. on a level of skill. Um, we've seen the opposite where teams really compound all their skill, but just are a mess for a while until they get yeah. things, you know, synergized. I, I'd, I'd personally find the middle balance where you get kind of like three and three. Well, obviously you want the middle balance, yeah. but it's like... <laughs> I know it's a cop-out <laughs> answer, but it's the it's the best answer. Fine. All yeah. right, let's move on, though, and talk about Paris, because uh, so far they've come out swinging right now. Yeah, they've, and they've started awesome. most of their, um, their stages pretty strong. Yeah, and then tippered a little bit down. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think we're going to see that from them this stage, because okay. um, here's a big difference is that when they're winning the games... Uh, in a few other stages where they were against kind of like shaky teams yeah. and the games were wholeheartedly convincing. Their GOATS was good enough to snatch the victory but not good enough to look yeah. like clean. But it looks pretty clean yeah. this time around. And they had a couple of clutch moments which is a, again, crucial factor. It seems like their Zarya play stepped up Yes, Donye. Donye looked mm -hmm. great on Zarya and Gray, um, you know. Switching though, to Widow yes, at, at moments, right? Straight up against Toronto at the last point of uh, Havana, which is really hard to break. Um, Toronto's right about to push it through and Gray's like, ah, oh, my Widow's better than yours. I'm just I'm just going to win the game. Swaps and slingshots up, kills like two people. How do you how do you weigh the risk then of switching off of a support for that DPS? To... <laughs> I, would, I would almost never actually um, recommend it as <laughs> oh, like, really? a set okay. play. I think it's really, really risky. Risky. Yeah. I think it's much better to be methodical and drilled certain set plays for when you're behind that scenario, mm -hmm. knowing what target to go on, knowing what formation to be in. Yeah. Um, but having that clutch factor, and I guess, I guess if someone's feeling it, like you know your flicks are on. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna tell him not to do it if he's like, I I could just I'm win now. It today. Then then I'll be like, 
okay but yeah. we've seen players you know um try this here and there and just like haven't succeeded and yeah. set your team back so it is risky um it worked out for paris this time mm -hmm. but i'm hesitant to say like this is something they should always do expect especially if teams start preparing for you know that's i guess that's swap. something you can you can weigh with a player like that though because he plays on a on his yeah. off so it's it's ver fairly similar aim. yeah fairly yeah. similar um not exactly but it's f it's fairly similar so um if he's like guys i'm i'm on point i'm yeah. not he missing hasn't missed anything a shot as Anna, and he's like i can transition this this is pretty transferable yeah. i i could see that happening yeah yeah i i i'd be happy to see that as i said i love uh, <laughs> I love uh, when I can see yeah. any more DPS in the match. Um, and, you know, like, again, on Havana, like, that's that's a map that Widow's very good on, too. Yeah. So I don't think this is something that Gray will do, though, like, all the time. It just happened to be applicable in the scenario, mm -hmm. and he was confident enough that, like, he could pull mm -hmm. off that clutch play. Um, I'm really, really skeptical that he's going to bring it out on every map suddenly yeah. on last point. So it, it, it worked out in the, this perfect little bubble scenario. Okay, so let's let's talk about the Fushi now. I've heard um, a bit of confusion by some people as to why they're keeping a certain player bench right now. Oh, yeah, and the I'm, drama. Yeah, the I'm, drama. So why why do you think this is happening? Uh, okay, well, rumor has it that mm -hmm. star player Carpe, you know, Korean mm -hmm. superstar, right, Widowmaker, amazing extraordinaire, um, doesn't like playing with Fraggy, who is um, mm -hmm. you know a European main tech on their team. He'd mm -hmm. rather play with their Korean main tech Sato, um, and Sato has been. He, he's been getting bullied, you know, he hasn't yeah. been looking like on the same page with a lot of his team Even if Carpe prefers him in the roster, so yeah. there might be a a divide a chasm that is split in the fusion locker room Yeah, um, and this is again not confirmed, but it seems pretty evident that even the casters are kind of like he, Sato's not cutting it like would you at mm -hmm. least give Fraggy a try and they just hasn't haven't responded whatsoever He's he's MIA so the the, the question then comes is like as as coaching staff or, or just support staff behind the scenes is there a point because obviously you you need to make sure yeah, that getting four the, blown out by yeah, Spark yeah, should be right. the point like, where like, like when, uh, when do you step in because like you it's obviously you have to let your players have a lot of the things that they want because they're doing the work right yeah. but at some point you compromise. have to say man we need you to let this guy in yeah I mean like so so here's a this is this is a little bit of a um, um, uh, you know off topic but mm -hmm. when it comes to coaching there's a few different styles. Yeah. Right. There's, you know, the the uh, kind of the style where you're more of like a dictator, where it's like what you say, you tell them what to do. They're expected to learn and prepare yeah. what you're saying. Whiteboard play coach. You know, exactly. you're drawing the plays and they're executing. Perfect. And then you have the middle ground one, where it's more of a democracy, where you mm -hmm. have expectations and things you want them to accomplish, and the way in which you go to about accomplishing them is them. more of a compromise. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a free locker room, or you know. Uh, you have the players kind of run the show, and you're there to make sure things don't go mm -hmm. too bad. You're there to quell disagreements and arguments. Mm -hmm. And as of right now, I can't tell what Fusions is doing. Because it seems like they, <laughs> it's different depending on who you are, yeah. right? They, they're seeming to play favorites because whatever Carpe wants, he's the star player, yeah. he gets. But the other guys have expressed um, dislike for, not the coaching staff, but I think um, rosters, yeah. both across their main teams and in their academy teams, actually. So. Okay. I, I just I just feel like at some point that top player privilege has to kind of be kiboshed. The coach I, I has to agree. Say, I agree. You gotta listen yeah. to us. Unless he's like faker or something, and he's like <laughs> yeah, world I star. Suppose. Yeah, but like even in scenarios like that, they have to there has to be some respect for exactly for, for, for the coaching staff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now I want to talk about something that's been interesting. Seoul has they're doing like they have way too Crazy. many subs, but they <laughs> they're work. not subs anymore. Like, yeah, that's true. They're like they're, so they're actually using like a twelve man roster, which right is now. absolutely insane. I, I think this how do you coach precedent. that? Um, you have a lot of coaches. <laughs> right. You have you have head honcho. You got a couple of assistant coaches that that um, follow the formula. They believe in the goal. They believe in the message and, yeah. and the vision. And uh -huh. it seems successful. They're very unified, and they have set rosters, set entirely again different teams. Six guys here, six yeah. guys there, to prep for certain matches based on playstyle. Okay. And if this succeeds, which again this, they 2 0 this week in terms of matches, does seem like it's succeeding. Yeah. It makes them incredibly difficult to scout and prepare for. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've actually seen this in any, any other esport where you have two. Like four, no, two set rosters playing. for anything. No, yeah, it's for, like definitely not Rocket for League. For the most part, yeah, definitely for, not in like League or Dota. I've seen, I've seen rosters where they'll have one player that they'll throw in for yeah, a certain maybe two at most. Not a whole new roster, no. though. Absolutely I, crazy. I mean, honestly, do you think we're going to see this happen with more teams? Because it kind of makes sense. It, it's, it's expensive, it's a lot of, but it makes yeah. sense. It's, it's a big investment, and yeah. it could blow up in your face because some of the players that need more improvement might not be getting the attention they need. Mm -hmm. um, you might have. Uh, some issues with personality or like people are wanting to transcend the line. That's true, yeah. But if this works out beautifully, right, you have two uh, teams that can scrim mm -hmm. within and kind of prepare and 
um, you know, make sure that you don't leak any sort of strats. You have some secret yeah. curveballs in there. Uh, teams have to spend so many more hours like scouting you and mm -hmm. preparing for each of little iteration. And here's the here's the big thing. It's not just like Soul has two separate six guys that only play with each other. You've seen them in prior stages mix and match. Yeah. So you never know exactly what they're gonna do. You can scout like a full six and the full six on this side, but what mm -hmm. if that week they decide to maybe switch one or two switch them out, yeah. and mix the styles? It'll, it'll, it's, it's so difficult to prepare for. I wouldn't even know. That could be so volatile even for your own team, I suppose, right? Yeah, you got, you got to really make sure this is like nailed down. Yeah. And they've had that little break between stages that I think do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that this will work out. And I would love to see yeah. in the future every team eventually with the budgets get 12-man rosters and have such an intricate like dynamic. It's yeah, yeah, money, it, money's maybe a big, eventually, big but uh, now you, before you enough about the teams. I want to I want to talk about your uh, preferences here. Okay. I heard you mention about Havana before, and yeah. I feel like you're not fully Beautiful on board. Map. Beautiful, Beautiful but, gorgeous map. <laughs> just not when you're trying to play on it, right? No, it's <laughs> it's pretty unfun from my experience because so okay. Here, Maps laid onto three parts. Are the players thinking the same thing? Because it just debuted. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of players are struggling a lot to get okay. a grasp on how this map is supposed to be played. So, Ghost is meta. You play tanks all the time, right? But in the first one, you have this really long stretch where it's perfect for sniper sight lines. So yeah. some teams have been experimenting with bunker there. Yeah. Um, and the first point for one is very difficult to crack. Mm -hmm. But then. That's not even the hardest part. You usually spend a lot of time on the first, but making into second with a low time back is super difficult because it weaves around. There's a lot of obstruction just sitting in the middle of the map with yeah. these giant like silos, and there's like these flanks that kind of go around into the high ground, but you see just the back of the enemy. So it, it's it's really is it, is it complicated. built for a new meta though? Like I I feel like I feel like that's so good yeah, for it's a good DPS for so on the second point, though. and like <laughs> awkward to transition from Ghost to the first, which is I guess good if they're trying to make it so you have to switch to a different comp on each point, yeah. diversify the play. But um, Overwatch is a game that's built on ultimates, mm -hmm. and ultimates are so strong that switching off and losing all your ultimate charge to do a new comp is, even though if your comp might be better uh, mm -hmm. in the long run against the enemy comp, once you out beat them in economy, uh, games don't usually last all that long for you to wheel out their economy, build yeah. up your own on a brand new comp. Let's say you're on GOATS, um, and you run through the first point, right? And you have all your alts ready. Yeah. You have maybe two or three fights, even if the the ratio of you winning is kind of slim, mm -hmm. to pull it out with, with a big alt or something and make a hero play. Mm -hmm. If you wholesale swap your comp to something that works better, um, even if your comp might be better, they'll beat you just because ultimates are so strong in this game. Yeah. Um, which makes, again, Havana like very difficult to, yeah. you, have to you have to pick your poison, right? So we mm -hmm. run through this uh, with goats on the first point, make it really hard for us, but have this strength to muscle out with alts on the second, even though the terrain's kind of awkward? Mm -hmm. Or do we play like a more DPSC comp on the first, make it to the second, and then have to switch goats, and then play from behind for three or four fights? Okay, Ron, I'm gonna get you to rant more to me about later when we're playing, but okay. right now, I, I need us to, to close out our week one talk sure. with your player of the week. All right, my player of the week goes to, we talked about him a little bit, yeah. Sabe Yolby on the NYXL. We're, lo you know, we're loving to have this married man back on the roster, yeah. right? He has his ring in, his brain set on straight. It's a marriage power, dude. It is. We see it across all it's these parts. It's love, <laughs> yeah. right? He's on Sombra, he's like, I hack you for my wife, yeah. and then hits the big EMP. I don't know if that is like, the, the source's power, I'd like to hope it is because it's so wholesome. I mean, yeah, I'll, I like wholesome, honestly, so we'll like, take it. Like, honestly, I, we should credit him for the effort he's put in over these past few mm -hmm. weeks in the training room. I know it's not easy to pick up a new hero, especially in the Overwatch League yeah. where expectations are set so high. Um, he's spoke a little bit in a brief interview about he's having a little bit of depression. He's like, oh, you know, I was, I was so good in this one meta, but now we're mm -hmm. not playing me. And, you know, as a player, you stagnate if you don't get playtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, at one point, I even thought about quitting. Wow. Yeah, but he's like, you know, I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to put That's in the good. effort and, and, and kind of make a bit mark and having this 2 a week. That's a feel good story. It is. I it like is. it. Yeah, I Mary Man, 2 a week, good stuff. All right, now we just uh, we just have a couple minutes left. This is just you and me. I want right. to talk uh, about some fun, some jerseys. Uh, I've I've seen. Uh, well, I haven't actually seen them, but I've heard that there's some jerseys. Um, it's kind of like their their third, third kit collection. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just to um, I guess respect the cities that they're they're based in. Yeah. Um, and to kind of pull on the heritage. So yeah. I want to take a look at a couple of these. I'm going to judge them. <laughs> okay. And get your thoughts. Right, I, I'm I heard for this. you put a tier list out. Right. I did. I did. Okay. So first up is our Flor Florida. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Oh, I actually really like yeah, this one. Yeah, it's the vice color. It's, it's the Miami, yeah, yeah, that whole Miami wave. field vice, yeah. yeah this you is, know what? This is the top of my tier list. I put this at my number one. Oh, is one. it? Yeah. I'm glad I like it then. Yeah. No, that is it clean. Is, it is so mm. nice. The colors are beautiful. Um, it's not too much either. It's not mm -hmm. cluttered. It's very clean. Uh, yeah, I, I, this is my number one. Mi yeah, the minimalism of it yeah. and, the, and the neon. The color scheme is much better than their 
pretty like ugly. Was well, it 90s? Yellow. Yeah, the 90s. Oh, oh, you're talking about the original. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the, way better. The they should inverse just wear Shanghai colors. They should just wear those. Happening. These all the time. I, w yeah. I, I wish it wasn't limited. I wish they just wore it constantly. But uh, you know, they're, they're gonna get a color change soon, apparently. Okay. Which is, if that happens, we get that stuff all the time, which is great. Okay, I like that. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the next one. So gladiators. Um, purple still. Ooh. I'm not a super. Fan of, so of this so one. in this image, it's a little kind of hard to tell, but they are a lot of flares of kind of like skulls and stuff that kind of represent Latino culture in LA. Yeah. So they're kind of you know. I guess that's why you got like the like the graffiti style writing and stuff. Yes, yes, too. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're getting you're getting the idea. Um, it's it's more subtle and it sticks to their original colors. Yeah. So I think it's it's okay. It's okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like I'm not. It's not like it's gross or anything. Yeah. It's just cool. It doesn't stand out a ton. It's 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 a kind of subtle, but that's mm -hmm. a, probably what they're going for. So on, on that level, I think they succeeded. All right. Yeah. The next one up, I think, is the shock. Yeah. Okay. Oh, can't. That's a, there's a lot going on. There. Yeah. You want to talk about that? <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on. There. I'm shocked that someone would allow this oh, go through. Oh, boo. Well, Sinatra <laughs> looks great. He looks. He's, he's a great model. Well, no, he looks fine. Um, the shirt. Nothing wrong with him. The shirt a little. What's why why the orange? Uh, their colors are orange and, and like gray. Yeah, but it looks like it, someone spilled a paint bucket. Yeah, it looks like a Jackson like they, Pollock painting. But yeah, like, but like it just happened to kind of be in like camo. Yeah. I assume that was at the bottom, like no. low down. I think if you're trying to like be in a scenario where you need camouflage, that you wouldn't want to go with that color scheme. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty loud, but not in a way that like makes me want to scream for them. Makes me want to scream, what are those? But like for a shirt. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not, I'm not a fan <laughs> of that one. So let's move on. Uh, I think uh, fusion. Is uh, should be our next one. Okay, oh, is it just a ref jersey? <laughs> yeah, <it's> definitely. <laughs> what? Definitely. I don't know what they're really going for here. Um, the fonts, pretty boring. Yeah, what's kind of hard to what, see? What, what heritage are they? Uh, don't know. <laughs> okay. Don't don't really see. Uh, yeah, that that's a that's a D. That's a that's D. A that's D a DMI list as well. I don't know. I mean, their colors are like like orange, black, and white. They got the black and the white. But that's just black and white. And then you look just, like a the referee. vertical stripes. Yeah, you got it. They like, you don't get to play anymore. No, You're yeah, a ref six of them, six of them are right. just all refs now. All right, let's keep it close to home here <laughs> and talk about the Defiance. Now, this this is nifty. It's like, I, I like the, uh, again, the minimalism. I love minimalism. It's kind of weird how it's at the same time. off centered off the top, though. Like, it almost looks like those baggy shirts that Bieber wears. Yeah. Is that, gonna, is that gonna gonna what they're going for? I don't want to. I, well, I mean, he's Canadian. But like, here's the thing. If you notice on the shirt, um, yeah. they, it says, you know, we call the six, right? It says six and all yeah. these different little languages. Yep, yep. Because um, it's a very diverse city. area. Yeah, yeah. yeah Toronto is very diverse. So here's here's what I'm like. I, I love the design, but I didn't know this until fairly recently. That mm -hmm. knocks it down a peg a bit for me. But a few of the words like translated out. Are they translated wrong? They're like use they use like Google Translate and they don't. Oh like, no! They don't mean six correctly in like the context that like it intended. Oh yeah, shirt. but that's the thing is English English is is uh, like you can just say a word and it'll probably make sense yeah, because yeah. there's no real rules you can follow. Right. But in some languages, the word depending on how you're talking to someone, about someone, around someone. For sure. Even their it's, name can change. It varies a lot, and like a couple of people were like, oh, "I don't." They're a hundred bucks. They're yeah. hundred bucks USD. So it's like a hundred something dollars. Anyways, I'm not gonna be angry at about the economy. At least get someone to translate. But yeah, at least get like a proper dude to translate the thing. <laughs> I, I love the jersey. I love the design. Get whoever's in charge of like translation. Like, uh, yeah. to, you know, talk to them. Yeah, I, f I feel like I, I appreciate the concept. I feel like they could have done it just a little bit better, though. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Now, okay, we're almost out of time here, and I so I do want to get your thoughts on this. We talked about this on the show the other day. Overwatch 2. There are reports <laughs> coming out now, now that they, they so they they um, they shut down Rest in uh, peace, an Starcraft FPS. Yes, yeah. Starcraft FPS. Yeah. Um, second, it, for, second time apparently. Yeah, yeah. rip them again for Overwatch 2. Poor guys. I feel like some people might be a little bit upset of that. Now some people, I heard some devs saying that it was there's going to be like a, a Left 4 dead, dead feel. Yeah. Like are the, are, are the pro players going to have to move to this? Like what 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 are well, your thoughts? You here? ask me as if I'm in the. No, I know, I know. But like, what are you okay. thinking? Like so. First thoughts, I love Left 4 Dead. I have like every single achievement for Left 4 Dead 1. So you're all for this. Almost all of them for Left 4 Dead 2. Awesome game. I'm for the PvE aspect. I, I love yeah. lore as well. I would love for them to expand on the universe. We've mm -hmm. seen Blizzard really push like toys and like shows and comic books and stuff and trying to get it like out as a, a larger thing than just a video yeah. game. And I think to push a sequel that focuses more on lore would be good for that. Oh, I want more lore. They do such yeah. a good job with their characters. Yeah, good, great universe, great Absolutely. universe. Absolutely. Um, for like a, like a competition kind of angle, mm -hmm. like 
I'm confused in the same way that you are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, do you have these players move from Overwatch League, uh, playing Overwatch 1, to Overwatch 2? Is yeah. Overwatch 2 really similar to Overwatch 1, where it's the same game, but with like a bunch of extra stuff? Like, in, in the way, like, I guess, fighting games are, where it's like mm -hmm. basically the same game with minor adjustments. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like, you know, story mode or, or, or arcade modes or towers or something. Oh, no, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of longevity for the sake of my career. Of course. <laughs> right? No kidding. But it, there's a lot of logistical kind of things that have to answer here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, did you, like, let's say they said uh, created Rocket League 2, right? If it's, but there's no reason to. Exactly. And that's how I feel about Overwatch. Yeah, me too. But like, let's say they added <laughs> yeah. more for Rocket League, which is weird because they're cars. Then you would probably be a little bit more excited for an, an aspect that's new and like fresh. Yeah, but I don't know what what it would be. We'll have to talk about it another time on a Rocket League show. <laughs> Ron, it's like the Cars movie, Cars Four. <laughs> yes, exactly. But we are out of time right now. Uh, but you will be back next week, of course, and so will AJ to talk League Two. Until then, ping us on all the socials, socials, and tell us what you think of Overwatch Two rumors. Peace, and we'll see you in the future.